From the lecture, you know the hydrogen-like impurity problem um, in gallium arsenide, which is an isotropic material. Um, in this problem, we would like to um, look into a semiconductor which does not have an isotropic dispersion rela relation and we will use silicon as the most prominent and technologically most important example. The hydrogen-like impurity in silicon um, is attached to one of the uh, six equivalent cigar-shaped uh, conduction band minima which are oriented in the um, along the three principal axes in silicon. The effective Hamiltonian is given in the problem uh, distinguishes a longitudinal mass along the axis along the principal axis and a transverse mass um, normal to the axis. This is this difference in the masses is uh, essentially the difference between the isotropic case and the anisotropic case, while the Coulomb potential of the positively charged donor ion remains isotropic, so it depends only on the radial coordinate r. Now, in order to get a feeling for what this uh, change in uh, to an anisotropic system uh, will do to the hydrogen problem, we will uh, look into it in terms of perturbation theory. For this purpose, we want to separate this Hamiltonian into a part that is isotropic, and we know the solution then from the standard problem, and a correction or perturbation that reflects the anisotropy. To this end, we have to rewrite this Hamiltonian in a certain way, in such a way that we somehow get um, a well-separated perturbation term plus an isotropic Hamiltonian. We can achieve this in the following way. We rewrite the first term, which essentially contains the momentum squared in x direction, which I want to write as px squared divided by 2, and now there would be the longitudinal mass, but in fact we would like to have the transverse mass there to get the isotropic part. If I wanted to write a transverse mass here, of course I needed a correction factor, um, which would give the longitudinal mass back, which is the factor 1 plus delta m over mt, and this is a small quantity that we want to use as our perturbation parameter. The rest of the Hamiltonian remains unchanged for the moment and we will proceed now by essentially adding the isotropic um, part that is missing here in x direction, px squared over 2mt to this Hamiltonian compensating for it by subtracting it from this term. So, in this spirit, we rewrite um, px squared over 2mt times 1 divided by 1 plus delta m over mt. That would be this um, correcting factor that we had before. And now we want to subtract 1 times px squared over 2mt in order to be able to add 1 px squared over 2mt to the remaining Hamiltonian. And the remaining Hamiltonian now reads px squared plus py squared plus pz squared divided by 2mt plus Vc of r. Now we see that this part, this is the isotropic hydrogen problem. And we may call this the unperturbed Hamiltonian H0. 
for which we know the wave functions and the energy eigenvalues. And this is our perturbation. which we may call H1. We can um, rewrite the perturbation still a little bit to make it look a little bit more convenient um, by working out this bracketed ex expression here. And what we will get is px squared over 2ml with a negative sign times delta m over mt. And this is the small parameter in our problem. So for doing perturbation theory with this term as a perturbation, we need, of course, the wave functions of the unperturbed problem. You find these wave functions in your favorite quantum mechanics textbook, or you look it up on the internet, and I have prepared the lowest lying wave functions for you here. Um, so you probably remember that wave functions of the hydrogen problem are classified by a radial quantum number, um, which is here, or principal quantum number sometimes, uh, which is here 1 or 2, by an angular momentum quantum number, which is 0 for S states and 1 for P states. And then in order to distinguish the threefold degenerate P states, um, we have the Z component of the angular momentum, which takes values plus or minus one or zero for p states and only zero for s states. Now in these wave function expressions that we have over here you see there is a parameter a which is the Bohr radius of um, the hydrogen problem. You see that the wave function, the especially the pz wave function, already has a, uh, a special form where um, the r times cosine theta, this is in spherical coordinates, would correspond to the z coordinates. So here we have in fact a prefactor z divided by a uh, times e to the minus r divided by 2a. So we can see that this wave function has an odd symmetry in z direction while it is even in x and y direction. For the 2p plus minus states, such a symmetry is not so evident um, because these are angular momentum eigenstates. And we will, um, for the purpose of perturbation theory, be better off to form linear combinations of the plus minus states that have an x over a and a y over a uh, indicating their symmetry in a Cartesian coordinate system. So for this purpose, we will form linear combinations. We will form a wave function psi um, 2 p x, which is the linear combination of the 2, 1, 0 state with a plus sign with the 2, 1, minus 1 state. And for normalization purposes, we need 1 over square root of 2 here. And uh, if we work this wave function out, we see the sum of such wave functions will keep most of the prefactors the same. So we get 1 divided by 4 divided by square root of 2 pi times 1 over a to the power of 3 half um, and we get the exponential, but then combining e to the i phi plus e to the minus i phi will result in cosine phi. 
and r times sine theta cosine phi, this is nothing else but the x coordinate. So we have x over a times e to the minus r over 2a. So you see that this psi 2 pi x function, wave function, now um, is odd in x direction, like the pz wave function is odd in z direction, um, because it has a, a node at x equal to 0, but it will be even in y and z, like this wave function is even in x and y. In a similar way, we form the linear combination psi 2 py, which is the linear combination of 2, 1, 0, minus 2, 1, minus 1, divided by square root of 2. And uh, in this case, we need an imaginary unit because we want to form from e to the plus i phi minus e to the minus i phi, essentially a sine, to end up with r sine theta sine phi, which would then give the y coordinate. So in this case, we obtain 1 over 4 square root of 2 pi, 1 over a to the power of 3 half times y over a e to the minus r over 2a. And now the function is anti-symmetric in y, but it is symmetric in x and z. Now, we will use these three and these two, meaning five wave functions, to treat our perturbation problem. And what we need to do is, in first order, we need to work out the matrix elements of this perturbation with all the wave function combinations that we can form with our five wave functions. So in general, such a matrix element between two states would look like this. We would have state i and we would treat the perturbation minus px squared over 2ml delta m over mt as being small and then there is a second state j and this is the matrix element and this means in practice that we will work out a integral in three-dimensional space over x, y and z of wave function uh, i um, times the perturbation px squared over 2ml uh, delta m over mt psi j. Now, we've written these wave functions that we use in our um, treatment in such a way that they are either even or odd in the Cartesian directions x, y, and z. Now the perturbation px squared is essentially a second derivative, we see it here, in x direction. So if a wave function is even in x direction, applying px squared to this wave function will again give an even function in x. Applying px to an odd wave function in x direction will give an odd um, function. So the symmetry is preserved, the symmetry of the wave function here is preserved by operating px squared on it. And this symmetry consideration makes it easy to now work out all the matrix elements between these five states. So we have a kind of table of five by five matrix elements which we have to work out and this table is already um, filled here. So you see we form matrix elements with all these pairs of wave functions. So for example this would be the psi 
i states and this would be the psi j states so if we have in the integral the one s and the one s state then since this state is even in x direction even in y and even in z direction applying px squared will leave the symmetry intact so we have even functions in all three spatial directions so this will give a finite uh, value for the integral for the matrix element which we call m11 we do the same thing combining 1s and 2s 2s has the same symmetry property as 1s so we can apply the same arguments and get a finite value for the um, integral for for the matrix element which we call m12 combining the px state and the 1s state is now different because px is even in y and z but it's odd in x direction now applying the perturbation operator on this wave function will again give an odd function in x direction so we have an integral in x direction where we have an odd function and an even function to combine and this integral will give zero this is why we have a zero here by symmetry looking at the combination of 1s and py we have the situation that the y wave function is odd in y direction but the s function is even in y direction so integrating over y which is unaffected by the perturbation will give zero for symmetry reasons and so you can continue and um, essentially uh, find out that all these matrix elements are zero for symmetry reasons and the only ones that remain are those on the diagonal and these two that would mix the 2s state with the 1s state there's another symmetry argument um, since our perturbation operates in x direction and both py and pz orbitals are orthogonal to the x direction um, by symmetry these two matrix elements must be the same so we have by symmetry m44 is equal to m55 now if you think about the energy uh, scheme for um, for the hydrogen problem then the energy levels would have energies that are lowest for the 1s state so suppose the 1s state is here and uh, the 2s state was, would have a higher energy but it would be degenerate with all the p states so this is the n equal 1 energy and this is the n equal 2 energy but this one is fourfold degenerate now seeing this matrix um, we immediately realize that states p y and p z will be shifted by these matrix elements which are the same and state p x will be shifted by a different amount corresponding to the m33 matrix element so the three p states will split into two plus one in addition the two s state will mix with the one s state such that uh, the degeneracy will also be lifted so in total we have a splitting of these fourfold degenerate states according to the matrix elements in four um, uh, in three independent uh, energy levels um, one of which is twofold degenerate so this would be the py um, the py um, and p 
PZ states, uh, which still remain um, degenerate, this would be the PX, for example, and this could be the 2S, um, 1S hybrid. Correspondingly, this would be the other 2S, 1S hybrid state. So this uh, problem shows you very nicely how an anisotropy in the dispersion relation can strongly modify the isotropic hydrogen-like impurity problem and how it lifts uh, degeneracies that would normally be present uh, in the problem, um, in particular the n equal to 2 levels, the 2s 2px, 2py, 2pz states, which are degenerate in the isotropic case, are split into these three uh, levels, two of which are still degenerate um, in this case. <coughs>